Well, hello everybody and welcome to another DIY Live here. I'm Sharon, your ambassador for Essential Stencil today, bringing you another crafty project. So as you are jumping in and tuning in today, let me know where you're watching from. Also, um, if you are watching the live, I mean, watching the replay, don't forget that you can comment the word replay and you will get another chance after the 24 hours after we go live you've got another chance of winning a prize there at the end so guys stay tuned join in the comments and um, keep the conversation going because we love it when you uh, have questions i love to answer those if i can sometimes the comments are a little bit fast and we and we miss some but i always go back after my live and go through your comments and just if there's any questions there um, if you have any great ideas, I love to see those too. So uh, let's just see. I've got my live here on my laptop <clears throat> so that I can see the comments. Hi, Jude's here from Ohio. And just trying to get that so that I can see them properly. There we go. Joy's here from West Virginia. Um, Allison's watching. Lisa's watching. Marla. Good to see you all. So I've got... Um, Two projects today. I'm going to get two, two projects today that I wanted to work on. Hi, Tammy, Wendy, Peggy's watching, Linda. Good evening to you all. So, as you can tell from my accent, I'm here in Australia. Um, if you do have others who you know are DIYers and would love to watch our live, here's what you can do: share, press that little button down there, sprinkle the love all over Facebook land let people know we're live today. Now, I've also got my code written up there. So if you um, see any of the essential stencil products today that um, you love and you don't have yet, I know that some of you are collecting them. I restore stuff is the code you need today to get 10% off anything in essential stencils shop. Also, if you use that code, uh, you can get 50% off the Stencil of the Month Club. And I'll be talking a little bit about that today because I want to use something from our latest July set. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, I, it, it is cold in Australia. I just saw that comment. Yeah, it's cold, but I don't have long sleeves on today. The house is kind of fairly warm today, but it's not as cold as snowing because it never snows where I, where I live. So, all right, guys. I've got two projects. One is uh, from the Stencil of the Month Club set, which uh, you may have seen Amanda demonstrating that. She collaborated on this design this week, so I'll do that in a minute. The first thing I wanted to start on was our cute little stencil that is called, stencil set called Our Greatest Adventure, and it's a three-pack set. I'll show you the three stencils that are in this set today. And this one um, yeah, let me know if you have this set and you've done things with it because there are still quite a few things that you can, most of Essential Stencils sets, you can mix and match and chop and change them around, um, use different parts of them for other signs. So there's so many different fun ideas that you can do. So this one has that first one on the front there, you are our greatest adventure. And this is kind of, it's a nursery range set made for the nursery, but you can use it also. I think it'd look great in a little kid's room, little boy's room. Um, welcome to my crib. There's that one on the back there. And that's got, these are just little triangles. You could use those little triangles for a bunch of different things, just like as a patterned background. You could, so you could use this sign for welcome to my, and then you could substitute the word crib for a whole bunch of other things. There's also, so this is a three pack, remember, and these are 12 by 12 size. <clears throat> Excuse me. The last one is this one, which I'm going to use today called Little Man Cave. And so, of course, you could have Welcome to My and then put Little Man Cave underneath that or just Man Cave without the little. You could also use just that Man Cave sign for your man's cave <laughs> if he has one of those. Um, <clears throat> good evening. Thank you, everyone, who's jumping on and... Yes, Carl says, or is that Phyllis? I'm not sure who that was, but Carl Phyllis loves this month's uh, Essential Stencil set in the Stencil of the Month Club. So I'll be looking at that in just a minute. So to start off today, let's have a look at our little man cave sign. I love the little mountains. There's moon and stars. Now you could do this on a light background or a dark background because obviously if, it's, if you're going to use the moon and stars, you could use a dark background and have those a light color. But today I've just 
um, got these two boards that I've stuck together. I haven't stuck them together with glue or anything, just these metal brackets that you can screw on the back of it to create a fun sign, which is perfect for some of our long stenciled signs. You know, the long ones that, you know, like the laundry sign, the bakery sign, um, those kitchen signs, that kind of thing. They're great for those as well. But today I'm going to use it for this sign. And you might think, how are you going to fit that on there? Well, I'm not because I love to do things a little differently and just mix and match my stencils. So you get to see how we do that today. So this again is the Our Greatest Adventure three pack. Any of the things that I'm using today, I've put in our description of the live. So when you finish the live or even, you know, while you're watching, I think there's some way that you can go and see the description of our live in the actual live post. And I've listed there a supply list of all the things I'm using today, including the fusion mineral paint that I'm using, the stencils, the brushes, because we now don't forget there's new products on Essential Stencil um, just this week. Last week they had these new bridge brush set on, tiny weeny fine brushes that you can use for um, joining the little bridges in the letters, you know, that you use for stenciling. So there's those and there's a cute little wooden house. I'm about to receive some of those, but um, similar pine to the pine tags that we'll be using today. So the pine tag set you can get from Essential Stencil comes with a set of three but they have brand new in stock is the little uh, little wooden houses with a little roof on top and I can't wait to play with some of those. There was something else new an essential stencil as well this week. Can't remember, it'll come to me. <clears throat> Maybe some of you have seen it. Um, the bridge brushes and the little house. Maybe that was it. Anyway, good to see you. I'm going to point you down now now that we've got um, our hellos out of the way. And, oops, there we go. So I'm using, and here's my code, I restore stuff. Don't forget that. Share the live and my at I restore stuff is where you can find me anywhere on um, all of the social media platforms. So with our little man cave sign, I'm going to use this bottom part down here, little man cave. Now we've got a big knot in the pine wood. It's kind of a see-through-ish it's kind of a little bit see-through. Oh, I've got a shadow there of the camera coming down from the light. Sorry about that, guys. I had to change it, turn our table around today um, just in case. So I've got a bit of a different background, back of the window. All right, so I'm going to put, make sure that this little man cave sits in the bottom part of this first board here. And then we're just going to use these other bits and pieces of the stencil around it. So I'm going to be using, and I thought this was a fun color, blue pine from Fusion Mineral Paint and coal black. Now I do have affiliate links for those if you do want those. Essential Stencil might put that up for me or you can just ask in the comments if you're wanting the Fusion Mineral Paint. Oh, um, if you're wanting the links to my affiliate link for that to where you can find those if you don't have a local Fusion retailer and we'll pop that in the um, to answer and reply to your comment there. So, hi, I'm just trying to catch up with some of the comments as I'm seeing. Oh, someone's on their way home from travels. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, I'm be using our um, essential stencil brushes today. They come in. Oh, that's the other thing. I do remember now the new thing that essential stencil now has on their website are a single 5 8 inch brush that I'm assuming is one of the most popular sizes that people are loving. Great for all of the letter sizes. We'll use that one today. Um, but there's single ones of these. So instead of buying a whole set, you can buy single brushes as well. So, um, you know, I'd get the whole set. And then if you need extra brushes for anything, you can just pop one of those in your order as well. Uh, so that is new. It's not a new product, but it's new that you can only buy, you know, a single one. So there's that. Use my code I restore stuff to get your 10% off. All right, I was going to do a little shadowing thing here. So let's do that and we'll make black our shadow and then blue the color. Okay, so I've done, uh, let's just do the black shadow with another brush and then we'll do the main part with the others. Okay, so I'm dipping my brush. If you're new to stenciling, please let us know that too. I'd love to know. Now I've got a, a 
piece of paper here that I'm just going to offload that paint onto. Um, so if you do find that I um, if you do find <coughs> I forgot what I was going to say now that I'm repeating myself that's what I was going to say it's because we have a lot of new people that do love to join us on our lives let us know if you're new today and um, we'd love to say hello because there are there are yes Kimberly she says what a great announcement you can purchase the brushes separately just the five inch, just this brush so just the five eight inch brush you can purchase separately which must be one of the most popular brushes. So yeah, let us know if you are brand new to stenciling or if you've never purchased any essential stencils before. We'd love to know that in the comments and we have an amazing community here that watches our lives daily. So I am usually on at the same time, 7 p.m. CST, wherever that is in your time zone, uh, each Wednesday night right here and Essential Stencil has different ambassadors on every weekday, so Monday through Friday. So you get to see different tips and tricks for stenciling and using also Essential Stencil's transfers because there's of course the beautiful transfers that um, Essential Stencil has as well. Amy said that's her favorite size brush as well. Yeah, I'll be using that one in a minute. This one I'm using is the half inch brush. So then I'll use the 5 8 inch brush for doing our other images. So I'm just creating a shadow on our man cave sign, little man cave. Coming back in. So I'm just doing a little bit of a swirly method. If you've never stenciled before, this is how I do it. You might find your own way but you can always practice on a piece of scrap paper, scrap cardboard uh, until you are comfortable with stenciling on your signs. But even if you do make a mistake on your signs, you know, it isn't impossible to fix. You can just sand it back and create a fresh finish and start again. No problem at all. Okay, so we've done our first layer and while we are waiting, just in case I want to use this black again. <clears throat> I'm going to be putting this into a wet cloth just to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out. Um, I should probably wipe that off because, let's see, because we want to use the blue over the top of that as a shadow, like so that the black is a shadow. So when you're doing another color, and especially because this blue is a lighter color, I want to make sure my stencil's clean. So if you rub it off immediately, <coughs> oh, look at that. Um, it does, it will come off. And a dry cloth, make sure that's dry, so we won't be doing it immediately. I'll go on with the um, area up here so we can um, get that done and allow this some more time to dry. So we've got some mountains up here. Now there is also in that same set, so this is the set we're working on if you missed it earlier, our greatest adventure. And so there are some other mountains here. They are just slightly different in uh, shape and formation. This one is just plain mountains, no trees. This one has the trees beside it. So you can choose to do that one. Now I didn't bring my um, painter's tape, that's annoying. <clears throat> Let's just put this and I'm making it sit just slightly above the board here. So I'm just going to have to work really hard not to uh, stencil over um, the trees that are down below. Although I could put them in the image, couldn't I? But this one will go over the top of that. So we don't want that. This is the color Blue Pine and it's by Fusion Mineral Paint. It's this lovely, gorgeous mm, blue. It's got maybe some gray tones. It's a gray blue. Nice color. And again, we're going to grab our, this is just an envelope. And <clears throat> I just grab whatever is handy, whether it's a piece of cardboard or some people use a paper plate. It is a cute little sign. Okay, so I've offloaded there 
And I'm going to be doing my mountains and the trees and some of these stars we will add in. But I'm just being careful not to get the other tree that's down here. And it's kind of close to that moon. So because my board is quite rough, I've got to pounce a little bit because the stencil is um, in a place where the wood is rough underneath. So I'm just pouncing that a bit to make sure we get the wood grains. They're kind of like rough grains. I did sand it, but you know, I like this rustic kind of a look. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, the stencils do clean up really well, especially if you've done it, um, you know, if you can get to them right away, always on a live, I feel like I can't sit here and clean all my stencils well <laughs> while we're doing our lives. But see, look, I'm even doing this tree, this blue pine. Well, if it's blue pine, pine is a tree, right? <laughs> so I don't know if you have blue trees, but it still looks cute. You can do these whatever color you like. So I usually suggest for stenciling you create your background in a contrasting colour than what you want to do your stencils in. <coughs> so there's our mountains, cute mountains. So there's that colour, that blue pine. So that stands out quite well against the white background. And now let's add this bear and we could add some more trees down beside here. So we can put our trees, some of the trees down below. Um, and again, just dipping that into the paint. Yes, Sandy, I did create my board uh, just using some pine pallet racks. You know those pallets that you can just chop up? Well, I say you can just chop them up, but it is kind of quite a difficult task to chop up those pallets sometimes if anyone's tried it. Uh, so yeah, you definitely need the, the power tools for that one. And I don't bother um, with my pine, the the pallets, I really, I don't bother to uh, lift, um, open them. We just saw straight through using like a jigsaw or something, just saw straight um, and just leave those bits attached. The nails are just so tricky to try and get off sometimes. Okay, there's one little tree on that side and let's move over here and we're going to put these two trees down here. We could put one just at the bottom and then use another one and if you stay tuned I'm going to use some do some of those wooden tags you know our wooden tags that essential stencil has they come in a set of three and I want to use um, some metallics we're gonna have some fun with those so this other tree here I'm just going to move it up slightly onto this board and I still have enough on my brush because we're doing the trees I'm coming in from the outside in so we're just doing some good old basic stenciling tips today. Nothing too fancy, but you know, I just wanted to show you how you can just mix and match the stencils. Even though this stencil is a 12 by 12, we're going to use it on a long board in a different way. Okay, so now our bear. Oh, I didn't leave room for our bear. I forgot about him. Let's add him. We could add a couple of bears, you know. We could add one up here. Let's just have him walking way in the distance up here. Oh, it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Should have left some room there. Well, he can be walking uh, over here. Again, offloading our brush. And because that space in the, the bear is quite, it's different to the letters, they're so tiny and small, we can use our brush going inwards towards the center of the bear. If we've got a little bit too much on our brush, um, you can afford to have just that little bit extra on your brush, but make sure you're moving it inwards from the edges of the stencil and not getting the paint underneath. Okay, so there's our bear, it's a blue bear. What are some of the colours that you would choose for your little man cave? There we go. There's one bear there and we could turn this one over. Now I, that's kind of, we probably would need to dry that again. Uh, not dry it, I mean clean it because if we're going to turn it over we just don't want that paint to get 
wet on the underside because that'll be underneath the stencil. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to turn over, so see the words are backwards, I'm going to turn that over and add a little bear in here somewhere. Maybe he could even just sit right there, just about to hit the words. There are some other animal um, stencils, you know, our latest collection with the wild animals and things like that. So you could add, I mean, they're a lot larger, I believe, like there's an owl, there's all sorts of things. So you could have a little man cave and you could put your owl and what else was there, moose and um, all kinds of wild animals. You could add those to your little man cave sign. So if you're a stenciler or a sign maker who makes these for, um, you know, for selling at markets and your booths and things, look, I think I've got fuzzy edges on that bear because I had a little bit too much on my brush. So again, let's just clean that off and then we'll go on to our shadowing bit and I'll get onto the wooden tags, which I can't wait to, you, to show you. This morning, I say this morning because it's morning here in Australia, it's like 10 o'clock. Okay, so here's where we're going to do the shadowing. Okay, so let's just make sure that that bear is dry. I feel like I had a little bit too much paint. See, I make those little mistakes sometimes too. Um, adding a bit too much paint has some fuzzy edges, but hey, bears have fuzzy edges, don't they? Peggy said, I've got the three pack of deer and you used them today on your fall porch leaner. Great idea. The deer would be great in this as well, wouldn't they? Deer would be lovely on this. Okay, so now we've got our little man cave words that I've got the black is going to be the shadow. So what I do is just lift it up slightly because shadows are usually on the ground instead of if I push it down, the shadow would be up above. So I lift slightly and to one side, whether left or right, doesn't matter. I think in fact today I'll move it this way. That's your right, my left. Um, I'm going to move it this way because my bare nose is really close here. So I don't want to push it any further there. There, I want to move it across slightly the other way. So there I've moved it slightly. So when we've finished this, we will see the black shadow underneath. And again, dipping. And then you could use that shadowing technique for some of the trees. You could use it for a few different things. In fact, I might even have a little experiment with that in a minute. Making sure I've got, you can see that there. Um, yeah, guys, please feel free to share and don't forget to use my code I Restore Stuff and get 10% off all of your stencils. Anything that we're using today, that includes the brushes. I'll be using the wooden tags in a minute. And also, if you use my code I Restore Stuff, you'll get 50% off your first month in the Stencil of the Month Club. So if you have not heard about the Stencil of the Month Club yet, it is super fun. We have a Facebook group where we share ideas for using our stencils. Um, but each month you will get sent a set of, not one, not two, uh, three stencils, um, which all mix and match together. They're usually all theme related. And um, so Amanda did a collaboration with Essential Stencil. She's one of our other ambassadors. And she did a, their July, uh, Christmas in July type theme. And especially love the add-on, which is all coastal, which if you know Amanda, she is she lives in Florida and loves the coast. And so loves the coastal themes and does a lot with shells and things like that. So go check out some of her lives this week. Uh, she's been using her stencil of the month design this week as well. So I'll be using that in just a minute to show you something fun we can do with one of those. All right, so lifting that up and you can see that little 3D look. If I bring that up real close, you can see the black shadow in behind it kind of makes the words look a little bit three dimensional. So there we go. That's our little man cave sign. And again, you can do that. Oh, I was just going to show you, see if we can do something fun with uh, maybe one of the trees, just using a bit of that shadow technique. And I won't bother, uh, maybe just with some of the front ones. 
and I'm not going to do all of it but just a little bit of a brushing just lifting it up in fact just a little bit of a dry brushing so it's going to be so slight and I'm not changing the color of the trees we're just going to add a little bit of dimension I just and again here I am offloading the black as much as I can so see there's hardly anything on it we'll see what comes out of this uh, just wanted to add a little bit to the edges in fact I'm not getting much on there at all so let's just try that again add a little bit more to the brush it's easier to add more than take some off so okay you can do this with painters tape to hold your board down and usually you would see snow but in this I'm just kind of creating a bit of a shadowy thing oh, it's not too bad didn't really look as, as good as what I thought it would, but he, this is all about experimenting, right? We love to experiment here. See, I try practicing things and you think, and um, so that you can know mm, that's going to work or no, that's not going to work. Don't do what Sharon did. <laughs> all right, let's see. I'll probably have to do a similar thing because then it won't. It's just creating a little bit of a, almost makes it look like one of those You've got your 3D glasses on, um, and it, you know it kind of looks a bit blurry and fuzzy. A little bit just to the edges, so I'm not covering up the blue, just kind of creating a bit of a pouncy effect on the outside edges. Oh yeah, gives it an interesting look. I don't know if you can see that. <coughs> So try experimenting. Imagine doing that with different colours. Imagine a dark, like a black background or a midnight blue background. And then with some of these stars and moons and things, you could add the stars and the moons in the background as well. So we will leave that one for now. And let's have a look at what I'm going to do with our Stencil of the Month Club set. And some wooden tags. So if you've got your wooden tags, hey, who's crafting right now? I know that some of you love to craft while we're doing live. So that's a lot of fun. If you've got a craft area with some good lighting in it, um, it's good to craft at night time. All right, so I've got these wooden tags here and this one I've already done a bit of a stain on, but they come in a pack of three as well as the little rope hangers for each one. So they are also available at Essential Stencil and for 10% off you can use my code IRESTOREStUFF. <clears throat> Someone else has tried their shadowing. Yes, good. Oh yeah, perfect baby shower gift. Yes, and there is also another one that's a little girl themed kind of one. So you can have a look for that in Essential Stencil for a nursery. I think if you just typed in the word nursery, it would bring those up. Okay, so two I've left plain because we're going to stain these today show you how you can <clears throat> do some different staining with some water-based paints just using a wet cloth and I tried it on this one using metallic so I'm going to use um, Fusion's metallic colors today this one is copper and they have a gorgeous vintage gold this one is so if you want links to that I've got the Fusion Mineral Paint affiliate link that we can pop in the thread there or in your comment if you ask for it I would love to do that for you later so what I did was I used the copper to stain this side and you probably can't tell it looks a little bit blotchy uh, my result but the wood was a different sort of every every pine board is going to look a bit different in their grain so this one had a little bit more of a, a different grain with some swirls in it so I've done one side with a stain using metallic so I'll do that with the vintage gold um, but on the other side, on the reverse side, I just painted it straight metallic. So this is painted on and it's really difficult to see in the light. You can kind of see a shimmer there. That's copper. And then I've just stained this, which I'll show you how to do that now. So we are going to use for this one. So one of these I'll stain with our black paint and one of them I will stain with the vintage gold. So let's do that with the vintage gold for start. So all I did to stain this way was, oh, there's really a lot, of, a lot of paint on the lid. That's 
it's okay. Okay, so I've got just a wet cloth. So this is how I'm going to stain with just a wet cloth. And this is where I've done it with the copper. So I'm just going to turn that right over. And all I'm doing is dipping a tiny bit of the metallic, really only need a little bit. And I'm going to rub that all over my pine board on one side. I'll just do one side today. But this is how you sort of just, and because my um, it's a water-based paint, and because my cloth is wet, it will just give a slight shimmer and a grayish tone, grayish brownish tone to that grain. So you won't probably see this as well on the video, but I've never stained with metallics before. So I wanted to see if it was possible and I, I think I like the results. So you can add a little bit more if you wanted to, but see how you can still see the grain in there and let me see if you can see the shimmer that that creates just using a wet cloth and a tiny bit of metallic paint on your wet cloth. So then, and that's quite, because it's going straight into the wood, I can touch that and it's not really affecting the surface, but if it was painted on directly, then it would create a different look. But see, there's the there's the plain pine and then this is the one that I've just literally wiped with a wet cloth some vintage gold metallic paint on there and let me see can you see that shimmering in the light isn't that the cutest probably you can see that so I'll turn that over now and show you what that looks like just painted straight on using just a, a small brush, any kind of artist brush or paint brush is fine. Um, and so to do that just straight, metallic paints are a little bit um, funny if you just, if you do them a whole, two, if you keep going over and over and over your paint, this feels a little bit thick, um, you may get some drag if it starts to dry. So just be careful uh, to do nice long strokes because they've got little mica pigments in them and they might fold one way. That's how I've been told. So we just do nice big drag there. This vintage gold, it's got some green tones to it, doesn't it? And I'm going to be using something from the latest Stencil of the Month Club to stencil on these and I wonder if you can guess what it will be. Oh, maybe if you've seen the description of the live, you'll guess. I don't know if it came up on your feed, the description that I gave the live. <laughs> now, I could probably just slightly wet my brush here because I feel like it's uh, got some little... Oh, yep, see, we're starting to drag there. That's okay. You could either sand that off. So there's some of those little metallic pigments, mica pigments, I think they're called M-I-C-A. All right, let's see if you can see the shimmer on that one. So that's painting it directly on. You can see I've probably got some brush strokes on there, but that's okay. That's the vintage gold infusion. And then on the other side, I've stained it with the vintage gold. So you can just see a really slight shimmer. It might shimmer in different lights. Okay. Just popping that over here for now. Next, I'm just going to use my coal black. Oh, I've got to sit down. <laughs> Leaning over, it's not great for my back. Yeah, this is fusion mineral paint. And let's see. Oh, I wonder if I can just use this. Look, using the same wet cloth. So it's just damp, okay? And so we've stained this one on one side. Same with the copper. We've stained it on that side and straight on the other side. Now, usually I, if you want to do a larger furniture piece, you can mix up the, the paint. But I'm just going to use a bit on a wet cloth and literally drag it around. Um, if you are staining larger pieces of rural wood like pine, sometimes you'll need to condition the wood first and that will stop it from getting that blotchiness that you can sometimes get on these. Okay, so I've just dipped that in dipped that in the paint lid and using a wet cloth rubbing it on there. And you can do it on the sides as well. 
So the sides is usually sometimes this end part is called end grain and you'll see that those uh, the grains of the wood it'll turn out a lot darker than it does on say the sides where it's uh, the, the smooth grain. So the end grain is where the, you've got the end of the tree <laughs> and it literally uh, soaks up and, use, and has, it's a lot rougher too. It has a lot of the grain in there. So I've just got that wet cloth going all over there. And you could do both sides if you like. For the sake of time we'll just use this one side. And there we've got a nicely stained piece of wood. If you wanted to wipe off more I just take a clean part of the damp cloth and rub back even further. You can see that will just take away a little bit more of the stain and leave it a little bit more. But you may see some patches in there that's probably just because you haven't um, conditioned the wood. There are some wood conditioners you can use to help that with that. Okay now let me show you what we're going to use from our, and I think I can put that in the water now, from our Stencil of the Month Club. Let's have a look at it. Now there's a lot of ideas that you can use from this set that Amanda has collaborated with. Um, <coughs> so each month in the Stencil of the Month Club you get set, sent three stencils and they're quite large sets too, 12 by 16 sets. And this is, let's start with this one because we've got that black background. We've got all of the happy holidays, ho, 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 Noel, joy, peace. A little bauble right here and a, a cute leaf down the bottom, which I like. that sort of speaks peace to me. This bauble, you can also replace the O's in each of these with that bauble because it's around about the same size as that font. So that's a tip right there. So then our next stencil, so these are all with the July stencil of the month, still available now. Use my code iRestoreStuff, get 50% off your first month. And this, uh, this says, here you will find Santa's magic key for our house without a chimney. So you've got Santa's key there. Now this is what I'm going to be using, one, two, three keys for one, two, three tags and we'll be doing those in the metallic so that will be fun. Let's set that one aside. And then there's this one. May you never be too grown up to search the skies on Christmas Eve with the gorgeous, you know you can just, um, you know you could just use the Santa and reindeer for a whole nother set of stencils. You could mix and match that with your ho 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 and your Santa's reindeer. You could use you know happy holidays and the Santa's reindeer. You could use happy holidays and then have trees either side of that. So there's so many things that you can see how I mean you can mix and match all of the things. Then there's Amanda's fun coastal idea for Christmas which is the add-on. You will want this because see these the little um, mermaid tail, the, the shells and starfish and stuff. They can all be used to uh, coincide or coordinate with some of the lettering here. So you can use your sand dollar for the O's um, and things like that. Gorgeous lighthouse. I've seen Amanda use that. It's been heaps of fun watching her ideas uh, come into play. So we're going to be using our keys today. Now the other things, I always love to show you some other ideas that you can do with these keys because they're just gorgeous. I mean I've used them for all my antique things which I love to an collect antiques and collectibles and things and sell them in my little shop booth that I've got here in Brisbane. So we're going to be using, these keys are perfect for these little key tags. Uh, now you could use the keys for something like this set which is you have my whole heart for my whole life. I'm thinking you could use, you know, you have the key to my heart and find some of those words that might go with that and put keys here, you know, key to my heart or something like that. You would have to find them in those words in probably other, or just use some of the lettering set, you know. So I love to give you these ideas. The other one, now this is only in the Stencil of the Month Club. This was an add-on back in February 2022, I think, this year, possibly. Don't quote me on that, but if you just type in keys in the Stencil of the Month Club, you'll see it. Uh, but it's got this gorgeous little house, then it's got these words, keys, wallet, phone, kiss. Um, love lives here. But I like the, I saw the word keys and I thought, look, you could make a little sign that has that with the key on it. That sign also would fit on one of these tags, possibly that way. 
keys, phone, wallet. So just a fun ideas, some of the fun ideas that you can use with other stencils that Essential Stencil has. Don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff and get 10% off. That's off your whole order, no matter what you use. Alrighty, so let's have a look at some of these keys on these um, stained boards. So we've done copper that way, so I'd probably maybe put a black key on here. Let's use this side. So I showed you how to stain in metallics. You can do these double-sided. So you can use the wooden tags are so good for hanging and creating seasonal things, you know, seasonal on one side, holidays on another side, um, all sorts of fun things. So I think I'll do those two black. Let's do the black stain last because that's still drying a little bit. And we'll get our um, one that we stenciled in black. Where is it? It's the blue pine. Here it is in my wet cloth over here. The, uh, I'm just using a half inch brush with our black, coal black. Now you could do these white also if you liked, or you could do this in a different metallic. Um, I think the black will stand out better though. So let's have a look and see how that goes. Yeah, lots and lots of uses for that stencil set. Let's see how we can just offload this as much as we can. And I'm using it on the copper stained side. So you could use some different words on the other side, but I love these that these keys are the perfect size for these ta wood tags. Once again, the wooden tags come in a set of three. They also come with their little rope hanger things, or you could replace that with your own beautiful metallic ribbons or whatever, um, or whatever holiday, like you could do red, white, and blue for 4th of July or um, patriotic type thing. See how quick and easy that was. Look at that. So that's our gorgeous key on that tag. And of course we could do the same or a different key on the back. Oops, I've just gotten some black paint on there. Probably that was on my hand. So let's just grab a wet cloth and get that off as soon as we can. We can always just paint over that. So there's one. Now we get the different key. <coughs> maybe this one here. And let's see if we can maybe do a, try a copper, copper stencil on that one. Let's put that black away. And this may work. Let's see how, how good we go. Using a different size that I've got right here. Now there's my copper metallic paint right there. I'm just going to use a different section of my paper. Offload that in there. Now this, the metallics can be a little bit translucent, so we may need to um, do a couple of coats. We're just going to see, oh, you know what we also could have done is made a black shadow underneath the copper. That may, may make that stand out a lot better. So just try these things first. Or we could create the copper could be the shadow. So many different options, guys. So many. <laughs> so if it doesn't turn out as solid as you'd like it, see how you, it's, um, whoops, got some little, Something underneath there. It's not as solid as I would like it. So see how that, this one stands out a lot better with the black, whereas this one's a little bit lighter. But I could go over that with the black afterwards and use that copper as the shadow. I feel like I've got paint all over me. <coughs> Creating messes. So Maggie's asking where the key stencil is. This was in the Stencil of the Month Club for July, the current Stencil of the Month Club. So if you join the club, you will get these as part of the three stencils that you receive each month. So if you're not in the stencil of the month club, you can join using my code iRestoreStuff and um, get 50% off your first month. Perfect. All right, so because this is a, uh, a black background, we want a nice, let's go with the vintage gold, shall we? Vintage gold, this is Fusion's metallic color. And I've got one brush left to do that in because the other ones are all used up. Um, so just going to dip my brush carefully in there. Got way too much on the brush. And then we offload it onto 
paper. I feel like we need just a bit more to work in the bristles. Sometimes it... There we go. Okay. Moving things out of the way. I love this one. Look at that cute little heart design on that one. Okay, so you can see there. Get it in the right space. This is beautiful. Hoping that my vintage gold turns out uh, solid enough and stands out enough, but you could always use white as a bit of a shadow behind it. Need to do some more. Hold still. Didn't have my painter's tape out today, although the painter's tape, there's nowhere for it to go, even if I wanted to put it on this one. So you just got to hold it still with your other hand. Okay, let's see how we go. And again, we can just do a second coat. After this one's dried, I would go over that with a second coat. So you, again, probably won't be able to see. Oh, I do have a little bit of light shining on that. So you can kind of see the metallic shining on that. So I could go over that with a second coat. Silver would also be nice. Fusion has a silver metallic color. These are nice, really good solid metallic cover colors. But I do like the black. I think that stands out so nicely on that. Let me try just going over this one one more time with that black. Where is it? <clears throat> okay, let's try this. Here I am experimenting with you again. I feel like we've got something there. I don't know what that was. Pop it back down. I know I haven't cleaned my haven't cleaned my thing, my stencil. I'm going to shift it slightly so that we hopefully see a little bit of a copper shadow in there. And then I'm going to get my black brush. But this is where, right here on our lives, this is where you see live in real time <laughs> how things work out and how they don't work out. Okay, we're getting our black. and holding that really steady and hopefully we'll see a little bit of a let's see I'm just pouncing now because I feel like I've got a little bit too much on my brush and possibly was yeah you've really got to wait till the copper dries I think it was dry enough don't forget to hang around for the end because we will be picking some live winners really soon when we've finished our, our project here but yeah, if you've missed where we got these key stencils from, it's in the July Stencil of the Month Club set, where it's a Christmas in July theme. And you can join the Stencil of the Month Club by using my code I Restore Stuff and getting 50% off. So there we go. We've got some, it's standing out more now, a lot better. So that's standing out. We've got our black key here. So those are three different gorgeous antique vintage keys that you can use for your hangers. And I think I probably will go over that with a little bit more of a solar, solid um, coverage. Again, you can paint straight copper or do a copper stain like I did on this one. Same with the others. So I hope you have got a lot out of those ideas. Let me see. Where is my vintage gold paint again? Let's do this one more time. See if I can get more of a solid coverage on that one. That was the gold one, wasn't it? Oh, look, guys. Got copper got copper happening on my fingers it's everywhere it's everywhere okay <laughs> you gotta watch where you put things here well, there it is it's on the brush all right putting this down again so I can get my vintage gold oh I see it was on the it was on there Put it in exactly the same place. I'm not creating a shadow this time. I'm giving it a second coat. So sometimes you might find that the coverage isn't quite enough and it doesn't stand out enough. So we just give it a second coat and it's dried enough to where I can do that. You can get use the hairdryer or just wait until your stencil dries completely. And just add a second coat to that. And add as many as you like to make that really nice and solid. And again, you probably may not be able to see the metallic shimmer as much. Um, put that in my cleaning pile on the video, but I can just shine it in the light there and you'll be able to see. So that's just on a black stain. 
using. Now you can go back and watch the replay of how I did that if you missed it. This one is on a vintage gold background with black and a copper shadow. I don't know if you can see that shadow, just slightly there. And then we've got the copper stain, or you could use the solid copper and create a black key. I do like, what do you like best? I think I like the black on the metallic, this kind of look better. And it would, I think it would look even better on that solid copper metallic, because look how nice and shiny that is. So that's what we've done today. Let's see, we are going to be picking out prizes any minute now. I wanted to show you what I did back at the beginning of the live, so that <clears throat> if you missed it, you can watch the replay. And um, so let's have a look. I'll pop you up here so I can see some of your comments a little bit easier. Yes, I do. I use anything to offload, whoever that comment was. Yeah, I do. Um, because I just like to recycle stuff. I think, what's the use of wasting something that's clean and nice and I'm going to use? And when I could just use something I'm going to throw in the trash, like paper. Um, so that's what I use. So this is our little man cave sign that we used creating, um, the, using the 12 by 6, no, 12 by 12 inch stencil set, uh, which is great little guy uh, nursery thing using some blue pine. I don't know if you can see that. It looks sort of gray, but it's actually a nice blue. And we did a shadow technique on the little man cave. And then we also created <coughs> three keys using the wooden tag set. So don't forget those wooden tags also come with these little... Um, strings, ropes, whatever. You can use something else if you like. Real easy. Let me show you really quickly. Um, we're going to congratulate the winners. Congratulations. I'll read out your names in a second. So we just, I just grab the whole thing, tie, the, tie a knot in the end of the rope before I even put it into my tags. So I do that. So there's the knot right at the end. We have a knot and here's our loop. Then we just place the loop inside the hole using just see the loop place it inside the hole then grab your knot and poke it through the loop and pull and there we have our the rope tag so these are cute I love them I love the keys I can't wait to use those on so many other different things so congratulations winners today we have Elizabeth Lachelle I don't think I've heard of that name before Lachelle I hope that's how you say it. It's beautiful. And Jackie. So Elizabeth, Lachelle and Jackie. Please email support at Essential Stencil. There's instructions there on what to do. You've been tagged. So I can't wait for you to get your prizes. And guys, I will see you next week for another live DIY right here on Essential Stencils page. My name's Sharon and I'm from the blog I Restore Stuff. I'd love to see you over on my blog or my social medias at I Restore Stuff or iRestoreStuff.com. Let me know if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be here uh, going through those in a little minute after our live's over. Bye.